that's the other problem. I'm checking the, having forgotten my watch. Yeah, it's 11.34 by my watch, and the, West, the business meeting of the 75th West Coast Science Fantasy Conference will be in order. I am Kevin Stanley. My pronouns are he, him. I am the chair of the meeting. In the back of the room is the videographer, Lisa Hayes, she, her, and her assistant, Kumba Bear, he, him. This meeting is being recorded. Anybody else may record this meeting if they so choose. The recording of this meeting will be posted at my early, earliest opportunity to my personal YouTube channel, Kevin Stanley, because as far as I can tell, Westercon does not have a YouTube channel. We could do something about that someday if we wished, I don't know. Uh, but we will get the video out as soon as we can. That will apply to the main meeting. Uh, it is very likely that we will resolve ourselves into a committee on the whole at some point, at which point the meeting will have to authorize separately the recording of that, because it's a committee meeting. Um, I would like, I'm going to sit now that I've called the meeting order and begun the introductions, I'm going to sit down and ask the other officers of the meeting to introduce themselves, starting to my left. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Klein. I'm your deputy presiding officer, which means I get to do the fun, the fun duty of presiding over the committee of the whole. So, hey, God, have mercy on your soul. And you will need to be closer. To yes. Uh, so hopefully that will, hopefully that will not get too exciting, but let's face it, it will get too exciting. So. <laughs> Just to come. I'm Linda Denneroff. I'm the secretary of the business meeting. Oh, I'm Linda Denneroff. I'm the secretary of the business meeting. All right, there is one other microphone in the room at the head table. I know it's a relatively small meeting, but first of all, it is not, uh, there's only, the microphone on the camera is a small microphone located on the top of the camera, so it has to be loud enough to be heard there, and I'm gonna ask that everybody who is recognized to speak uh, use this microphone up here, which can reach all the way up here. Is there anybody besides you who has difficulty standing? I don't have any difficulty being heard anywhere. I'm uh, the drill sergeant. That's not the reason. You don't need to shout in that respect. I'm asking about, I'm, I'm moving this. Are there other people here, by a show of hands, who think they would have difficulty standing? I don't see anybody. That's what I wanted to know on that. How many people here have never attended a Westercon or Worldcon business meeting? Just a show of hands. So we only have one or two people. Just a few people here, okay? They're, 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 all right. The, the, the point I'm making here is that I'm, uh, there's a question of just how much I have to explain basic procedure here. We are going to be doing some very serious discussions here, and I'm going to try and hold things to a fairly serious tone. And that does mean that if you want to be recognized to speak, I'm going to ask you to stand, wait to be called upon, and then come up and speak into the microphone. And you don't talking to us, even though you say, Mr. Chair or Honorable Chair, uh, you are actually talking to all the members. My question. Uh, I would just also like to add that uh, you should remain seated when you're not trying to get recognition. If you're kind of hovering in the back of the room, I'm just going to assume that you're permanently not trying to seek recognition. So I would suggest sitting down. Yeah, that's what you would. Uh, let me see. One of what other housekeeping? Uh, 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 just on a personal note, I may also call you just by what, by the by the rower position because honestly, I haven't seen most of you without masks in several years and do not recognize faces right now. Yes, take no offense if we don't call you by name. If you would. Uh, all right. There are copies of the Western Era, uh, some copies of the Westcon bylaws, including on the very last page the agenda. And, um, but the first item of business by rule is the announcement of site selection results. And for that purpose, I recognize the site selection administrator, Linda Dinneroff. Well, it was a very interesting election. There were 17 total ballots cast, one by mail and six and 18, excuse me, there were 19 ballots. One by mail and 18 in person on Friday. Of those, uh, by mail, none of the above and total with prep. I 
type of that's one. Oh no no, that's because it's total with preference is one. Oh I see. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, I didn't sorry. draw a line. Yeah. So none of the above was won by mail. And then at the convention we had Seattle receive seven votes. Votes. Tonopah received five. Alcatraz Island received one. Bacon received one. A charter flight from Wake Island to Denver received one. I wonder who that was. Uh, Ketchikan, Alaska received one, but one vote. None of the above received one. We had total with preference 17 ballots. We had eight, uh, 19 ballots actually cast, but one person did not cast a vote. Needed to elect, we'd need 10 votes, and we did not receive any anywhere near that. Yes, that is another um, thing. Please silence your noise-making devices. I think mine is. Therefore, for section 3.15 of the Westacon bylaws, all ineligible bids were eliminated, and the ballot's next highest eligible preference was counted on the second round. In the second round, none of the above received one vote by mail. Atcon received three none of the above, and therefore uh, needed to elect. We needed three. Therefore, none of the above was the winner. The, the effect of the Westercon bylaws is that after the first round, the only candidate that could win was none of the above. Not surprisingly, okay, I'm sorry, Lisa. You're right. I, I'm just being myself, and that's too much. Uh, very well. Before we proceed with further business, I believe we need to declare those, get those election results as our official. Is there any objection to congrat thanking the tellers and uh, instructing them to destroy the ballots? Who are we thanking? I might wish to object on principle. Linda Denneroff. No, I would never object to Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. There being no objection, we, do, we thank the tellers for their work and uh, instruct them to destroy the ballots at their earliest opportunity. The ballots themselves are currently in secure storage. Uh, but, uh, and therefore the results of the election are official. Very well. Once again, we deal with the fact that we have no, uh, no Westercon selected by the site selection. That makes it the responsibility of the businessman. Yes, I'm going to get to the point soon, but I'm trying to make sure everybody understands the steps here. Our choices for the Westercon bylaws boil down to this business meeting can select a committee no longer down to a site, it's a committee. <coughs> can select a committee and tell it, you're responsible for Westercon 77. The only restriction upon that committee is that they have to hold the convention somewhere in North America, west 104 degrees west longitude, or in Hawaii. All of the <coughs> other restrictions in the bylaws go away. So if you're going to ask questions, well, where's your nonprofit? Where's your this? Where's your that? Those rules don't apply at this point. So that's one thing we can do, and that will require a three-fourths vote. All turn. Two-thirds, that's why we changed it. We fixed it. Thank you. I'm playing records from too long in the past. It's two-thirds vote to choose that way. Alternatively, we could either, by a majority vote, or by adjourning without making a decision, it has the same effect, say, this meeting cannot decide, in which case the bylaws say that the Lost List Board of Directors has six weeks to make a decision on the side of the convention. Based on past experience, it would be better if we could, the chair thinks it would be much better if we considered this as a committee of the whole, allowing for somewhat less formal debate. So moved. Right. Second. Is there any objection to going into committee of the whole? And before, yeah, Mr. Yellow, please rise and come to the microphone and remember to state your name so that it's on the record. Uh, ben Yellow, uh, just so that we can get this initially out of the way, I move that we declare ourselves unable to decide. Second. I'm trying to... Uh, I have a feeling that if we do that and don't do it, we can't raise the question again. I don't, I don't that know. Is, that is correct. Okay. The, the chair notes that uh, if this motion, 
if this if this motion fails, it cannot be made again without suspending the rules, which requires a two thirds vote. Correct. Uh, the reason the chair suggested going into the a hole was because you can do lots of multiple votes there. But nevertheless, is there? There, I think I heard a second. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, I'm talking about it. Yes. A who majority. Made the second? It doesn't One. matter who made the okay. second. Okay. okay. On this question, the majority being. Uh, that's true. Yeah, we got. This is a debatable question. Uh, I forgot. It's a debatable question. Uh, I, if you want to be recognized by the chair, you need to stand up. Mr. Yalla, you made the motion. Do you wish to make the first uh, uh, argument into our debate in favor of this? Um, the chair suggests that we try to limit this to, to let us say, not more than 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> no, the whole debate to 10 minutes. Thank you. Mr. Five minutes each side, yes. Go ahead. Basically, this lets us do a test vote immediately. Um, if we decide that we are unable to decide, we punt it to the last list, which will then get to make the decision. I also note that anyone who votes on the prevailing side gets to make a motion to reconsider, so that it will not take a two-thirds and suspension of the rules a simple majority can bring it up at any point. So noted. And therefore, let's just find out if people want to go into a long debate one way or the other. And this is a simple way to get a test vote without really having a test vote. Members are reminded to look out into the audience. That's who you're actually talking to. The four, we're just three members up here. Anyone wishing to speak against the proposal? Come, come on up. Say your name and look at this way. Well, done, uh, can I right there? Cool. Uh, I feel like the Committee of the Whole would be the right place to hold test votes because you can do test votes in the Committee of the Whole. That's part of the purpose of going into Committee of the Whole. And uh, I'm Cliff Dunn. Uh, were you asking for something more special about who I am? No, no, no. Okay. It's, 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 he didn't hear, he didn't hear. Oh, my apologies. Um, and therefore, I would move to lay this motion on the table. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. <laughs> this is not debatable, and I don't think we have a special role in it, and this is not worthless, therefore, a majority being necessary to lay this motion on the table. Parliamentary Whoever, question. Uh, or a point. Would the chair please very detailed and concisely point out how the vote works and which way the vote will take us, All depending right. upon how it goes? Please and thank you. The motion to lay on the table in American parlance, which is what we use, temporarily sets this motion that was made to to declare that we're deadlocked, or that uh, sets it aside without making a decision about it. it. This takes a majority in favor of <coughs> setting it aside. There is no set time to take it off the table. Um, but at any other time, a person could make a motion to, to remove from the table and therefore bring it back up before the meeting. It is not debatable. Um, all those in, I'm gonna try first by show of hands. All those in favor of setting the motion to declare that we cannot decide on the table, setting it aside. All those in favor of doing so, please raise your hand, setting it aside. Hands down. Those in opposed to setting it aside, raise your hands. Hands down. And, uh, there, uh, there being a majority in favor, it's not close enough to need to count it. Uh, the motion to declare that we are deadlocked is, set, is laid on the table. We now come back to where I was before, which is the chair suggests that we go into Committee of the Whole to generally discuss site selection, which may include recommending a decision to the main meeting and may include other matters related during that discussion. Is there any objection at this time to going into Committee of the Whole? Therefore, thank you. By the way, you all have learned that the way to say that there are no objections is to say nothing. If even one person says something, I'm going to assume you're objecting, and I'm going to take a vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, All right, we are therefore going to. Yes. Can we close the door? 
we can play if, if you like. Yeah, it'll make noise when people come and go, but that's, yeah, if you wish, yeah, go ahead. I'm all right with that. All right, is there, okay, we are about to go into meet the hole. Do I? I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna, thank you, you reminded me of the next step. Does the meeting wish the committee of the, uh, committee of the whole's proceedings to be reported? Uh, is there, is a majority being necessary to order this? All, uh, is there any objection to reporting the committee of the whole? Very well, at least when I manage the gamble, that means we have ended our, we have temporarily ended the main meeting and gone to committee of the whole and you can do the switch over at that point. Uh, we are now moving into a committee of the whole with the deputy presiding. It is 1.10 p.m. and the business meeting will return to order. The Committee of the Whole has presented two recommendations to the meeting. Because site selection business has priority over other business in the Chair's interpretation, we will take up the proposal on site selection first. The yes. You want to report? You want to do the report? You want to do the report? Yeah. Well, you were the chair of it, so go ahead. Uh, okay. The committee of the whole, having considered the matter of site selection, has two resolutions to report. Well, two <coughs> recommendations to report. Uh, the first one of which is in the matter of site sel selecting. A, as requested by the chair, the first one is uh, the bit is to award. Westercom 77 pursuant to section 3.16 of the Westercom bylaws to a to a committee consisting of Mr. Stanley and Ms. Hayes uh, for the per and the idea would be that this committee and the idea would be that that this committee is impact is uh, is empowered to to look for another committee to actually host the convention or if absolutely necessary, host it themselves. The, bef before I recognize Mr. Yao, the question, the procedural question before the meeting is, in as much as the chair of this meeting is one of the named of individuals in this, is there any objection to the chair to the chair here presiding over this motion? No. Okay. I know you but the way you don't object is to say nothing. I mean, thank you very much. Mr. Yawa, are you wishing to speak on to the recommendation of the motion, or is it a technical question? Uh, technical question. So Ben Yawa, speaking this way. Ben Yawa, uh, technical question. What is, we, we are awarding this to a committee of two. Mm -hmm. Would the committee of two please identify who it is that will make the final decision? Well, legitimate question. It is a legitimate question. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, let, 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 I'd like to ask. I'd like to ask Ms. Hayes to express an opinion on this question. <laughs> Lisa Hayes. Now clearly, a majority vote cannot work if we're opposed. However, we have worked in this position before, and I have, and I will tell you up front, I will allow Kevin the sway vote if we're in differentiation. So there will be two votes, and he has one extra if he has to use it. Yes. But generally, we reach a consensus because we argue it out very carefully, and we've done so in the past. I have no worry that if I have to, I will defer to Kevin Stanley and his far superior knowledge of conventions, convention running, and parliamentary procedure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the question before the meeting is on adopting the Recommendation of the Committee of the Whole to appoint Kevin Stanley and Lisa Hayes as a caretaker committee for WesterCon 77. You are, do, by doing so, you are actually technically, would be technically awarding WesterCon 77 to that committee, although there's a large understanding that they are going to go attempt to find a different committee to actually run it and only do it themselves as a last resort. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the committee of the proposal before us? 
Does anyone wish to speak against it? Very well, on this question. Actually, maybe I'll just ask it this way. Is there any objection to adopting the Committee of the Whole's recommendation? Seeing none, the recommendation is adopted. Westercon 77 has been awarded to the committee of Kevin Stanley and Lisa Hayes as the caretaker committee, and we will the committee will go forth and attempt to work out something for Westercon 77. Question, uh, Mr. Galway, again, just come on up and kind of speak. We, we don't have any motions on the floor right now, so take it as a, an inquiry. Um, point of clarification for myself, perhaps others. Is there a sort of deadline for this uh, committee? Uh, the last time we tried to do, the last time we did this, we discussed the deadlines and got into a muddle, and indeed, the, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to set a deadline, basically. Mm -hmm. However, in practice, if this you know, in practice, if this committee is unable to reach some sort of decision by the next WesterCon, uh, uh, God help us all. Uh, oh God, I won't record, record me saying that. Uh, I think it's likely that the caretaker committee would present a report to next to the next WesterCon business meeting, saying help, <laughs> and then that business meeting would be stuck with it. Ms. Hayes. In deference to Mr. Stanley, Lisa Hayes here, at the next Western Con in Utah, this committee will state where the Western Con 77 will occur. I have a place. People may or may not like it, but by God, it's going to be someplace. Thank you. So the, that effectively means we'll have a decision by the next Western Con. Those of you familiar with EasterCon are perhaps aware of what we have done here. We have done exactly what EasterCon does sometimes, and we're, we're in effect by punting it one year before, but we'll get something done before then, I'm sure of that. Ms. Okay. Denneron. I would like to recommend that a decision be made before next July, when the, when the West Con will be held, because the longer lead time we have, the better. So I'd like to make it maybe a six, six months. But what happens if the committee doesn't make a record, do something by then? You see what I'm saying? I think it would be better. Well, what to happens give... if the committee doesn't make it in, in a year? I mean, you oh, know. Well, then in that, I know what happens then in the business meeting if the next one discharges it and takes the decision on itself. I, I, the chair thinks it's better to just, look, it took us, it, took, it did take us a year last time. And I think it'd be better, we'll get some, I, I think it very likely we will get something done by the next Western Con. I would expect it to happen within six months, but I cannot guarantee such things. We have actually more candidates who have expressed interest in this room today than ever, that happened last time, okay? I think you, you, I think what you're basically saying is you want to, uh, uh, you know, give us some, discretion on this, we're aware of the issues. We're, we're better aware of the issues than most people. Besides which, it's our necks on the line. <laughs> yes, that's fine. Uh, the second recommendation of the Committee of the Whole is to, is to adopt scenario, the, to adopt the five items that were suggest, that were proposed as Scenario two in the handout. Uh, these are to remove the date restriction, to remove the zone restrictions from site selection, to set the filing deadline for bids as a relative number of days, uh, to set the distribution of ballot deadline as a number of days, and to set the vote by mail deadline as a number of days. And the committee would move the adoption of those and walk. Move to um, vote. No, you can't. Give me a moment on this. Um, <laughs> this is actually, this one's going to take a two-thirds vote because it's five separate proposals. The committee has moved to suspend the rules and adopt these five as a single set of, a single item. Is uh, that one motion or two motions? It is one motion to suspend the rules and adopt the five things as a group, which takes a two-thirds vote and is not debatable. I second it. All right. Well, the committee, the, the committee has moved it, basically, on your behalf. But let's put it this way. 
a two-thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules and adopt the package of proposals under scenario two. All those in favor of suspending the rules and adopting the five motions, raise your hand. Hands down. Those opposed? There be more than two-thirds in favor. The package of motions under scenario two, stated number 2.1 through 2.5, are adopted as constitutional amendments and are sent to next year's business meeting for ratification. They do not take effect unless next year's meeting ratifies them. Ms. Sullivan, if you, I, see your, I see your perplexness. <laughs> I don't have any bylaws in front of me, so I'm talking about this. Jerry Sullivan, if it doesn't take too long, could someone please tell me how site selection works for next year, since it won't be ratified yet, it'd still be under the old rules, right? Yes, that's, okay. that's, part, that's a Thank parliamentary you. inquiry. Next year's WesterCon site selection is still under the rules currently as they exist, including all the hard-coded deadlines. Thank you. The chair does observe that, there it is. Section 1.1 of the WesterCon bylaws, as it currently stands, but we just moved to strike it out if it's ratified, is that it is traditional but not obligatory that the West Coast Science Fantasy Conference be, have, take place over the July 4th weekend. However, the other part about that is that even if we, you know, someone, uh, by the way, a bid for a different date could show up, and it's only the dates that affect next year's WesterCon site selection deadline. And next year's WesterCon is on 4th of July weekend, so the hard-coded dates don't seem to matter that much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Fine. I, I would just note that I think the most onerous part will actually be the zone restrictions that remain in force. Yeah, and it's potentially. Martin Pine, uh, I think the most onerous thing will be that the zone restrictions remain in force. Okay. Before we, we are almost done, however, I don't know. I did see during the committee of the whole discussion at least somebody who was talking about scenario one. Uh, it is in, although the committee of the whole did not report it out, uh, any member could move scenario one if we wanted to vote on it. Uh, you can actually adopt both one and two now. You only have to make a final decision next year. Was there somebody who was interested in doing it? Okay, thank you. I just was curious because I, I did see people having an issue on it. Yeah, all right, very well. That, to my knowledge, as the chair, concludes all of the business that has been submitted to the Westercon Business Meeting. We have selected a site, effective, you know, technically at least, and the process for Westercon 77, and we have adopted five const uh, bylaw amendments. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to, this is not business, is there anyone else wishing to introduce new business before the business meeting? Oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna rule on that one. Oh, never mind. There's an item sitting on the table, uh, it, which would have made no sense to take off the table, and I would not have ruled taking it off the table as a uh, legitimate. It's going to die when the meeting adjourns, let's put it that way. Do you want me to move it so you can put no. it on the record? No. Leave I'm just it alone. You know that I would, Don't it would touch have been, it. It would have been illogical to, to be able to, to do it. Is what what I was no, 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 it's okay. It's a, it's, 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 it's a serious parliamentary issue that I just wanted to mention, and I thank Mr. Pine for bringing it to. Is there anyone else wishing to propose new business to the meeting? Very well. Are there announcements to be made? Ms. Sullivan. <coughs> Jerry Sullivan. Um, I noticed a lot of convention winners in this room. Next weekend, SMUFCON 40 is being held in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, some of us will be there, many of us won't. This SMUFCON, we're focusing on being a fully hybrid convention. Um, we are giving, we are uh, for like discussion groups. Um, it will, everybody will have a set of headphones and there are round tables so that people on Zoom will be able to hear everybody talk, not just the people, you know, one, you know, et cetera. 
um, all of the panels and program, I do apologize, our program schedule is not up yet. They're still ironing out the last things. I'll get it up as soon as they can. All of the items are going to be, you know, on, on Zoom, we're going to have a Discord. The membership rate for an online membership is $40. And for all the members of SMOFCON, they'll be able to watch all of the videos later. So even if you are busy next weekend, I'd encourage you to buy a membership. Yes, they will be available afterwards, but we know about getting around to things. Right now, you know when it is. You can see what you could next weekend. You'll be able to see the rest later. $40, the email address is smothcon 40 org and then you look at memberships and get your membership and I really I want this hybrid thing to succeed and be good and I think it would be a benefit to everybody who works on conventions here to attend that way and in person if you're sure you can thanks thank you is there anyone else wishing to make announcements is there any other things that people want to bring to the attention of the business meeting very well move to adjourn in that case, if there is no objection, <laughs> Damn, I heard it too, that. but that they're, they're just, I'm assuming the motion that they were making. Um, that being the case, if there is no objection, the meeting of the, 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 the WesterCon business meeting of WesterCon 75 is adjourned. Sing a Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> 126. Yes. Congratulations all. If you didn't sign the sign-in sheet, we're now on to number two.